Hi everyone, welcome to December Favorites. I have a lot to get through, so let's jump in. I have one previously mentioned item that it's been a while, and I'm sure sometimes you guys wonder, does she still like that? What happened to it? So I wanted to give you an update. My bit made toothbrush about a year, year and a half ago, my Sonicare died, and I bought this, and I think it came with seven heads, and I'll link it below, I think it was under $30. I love it. The Sonicare was like $100 at Costco, and I'm like, that's just crazy for a toothbrush. This is fantastic. It has all of the same modes. It has these easily replaceable heads, and it comes with seven of them. I don't think Sonicare comes with that, near that many, and this is a quarter of the price. I have one here and one at the house in the valley. Love it would absolutely recommend it and repurchase it. I really, really enjoy an electric toothbrush and this one really is good. This next one, Santa brought me. Everybody's using frownies. I wasn't sure about them, but I thought I can't get Botox because of my autoimmune diseases. And I'm starting to have 11s as well as wrinkles in my forehead. So this is a reusable mask by Pacifica, and it's very tacky, um, it's like that rubberized material. You put it on and it sticks, and leave it on as long as you want. I put it on before bed. Mark's a lucky man. <laughs> and I wear an eye mask, so when I'm going to sleep, he can't see it because my mask is up here and it covers it and I read my Kindle and then he's sound asleep before I pull it down and I have this on my forehead. When you wake up in the morning, from the very first time I wore this, your forehead is smoother. It is amazing. Now, does this last all day? No, but it's lasting longer and longer and I think it stops your muscles from making those motions so much especially when I wear it at night, so it's seven or eight hours when my forehead is not making those motions. And I am loving it. In the morning, you just peel it off. When I wash my face, I take a little bit of the same soap and rub it on here, rinse it off, leave it with the sticky side up to dry on the counter, and then when I'm done, it's got this great case. I have to get the stickies off of my finger. Um, it comes with this lovely metal tin. It says Pacifica on the front, and it's just really easy and convenient. I put this in my skincare drawer, and so then I remember to get it out, put it on as a last step. I do some skincare on my forehead, but you can't do too much or it doesn't stick. Or, like me, I put it on now and let it soak in for a bit, and then put this mask on. I love that it's reusable and it's just so easy and convenient. I've never used the frownies, so I can't compare, but I am loving this and probably will purchase another one for the house down in the valley so I have them and don't have to take it back and forth. So for Christmas, I got some Arabic perfumes. I think these are all over TikTok. They're both by Al Rahab, an Arabic company, and this is the most gorgeous, beautiful, bottle you've ever seen. It twists off and it is a dropper that you apply the oils. It doesn't actually drop. You swipe it on and the scent is very, very mild. What it does is it extends other perfumes. I've worn this with other perfumes and it does extend it and it doesn't seem to interfere. It's a very, very mild scent. I wouldn't want to wear it on its own. Now, when you wear it underneath another perfume, it definitely extends it, and especially if it's a complimentary perfume. This one is mainly oil, maybe a tiny little bit of citrus. It's so mild. I just love the bottle, though. How beautiful. Now, if you're looking to buy an insanely reasonably priced cologne that you can wear by itself or with this oil, I love this. Love it, love it, love it. This is called Soft, and it's by Al Rahab as well. It is an eau de perfume. It lasts. 
I have put it on one day and when I wake up the next day, I can still smell it. This is so beautiful. It is a very mild citrus that dries down very quickly and what remains is a vanilla. Some people say it's sweet. I don't sense the sweetness. I think it's balanced out extremely well. It's got some complexity with the caramel in there and that gives it a musk but it's not too strong of a musk because the vanilla balances out the musk. It also has a white musk, an orchid, jasmine, all different kinds of notes. It is soft but lasting. So I love my floral scents for the summer like um, Dolce Gabbana Intense Light Blue. For the winter all of my scents are very strong and heavy, like Alien. I wanted something more wearable. I feel like with scents like Alien, you just cannot wear those to work. And when you leave a room, you can still smell it. And I've even sprayed it and then put my arm through. It's too strong. This is gorgeous. I love it. And Mark loves it, which makes me so happy. I think this is under $10, it might be under $8, I will link it on Amazon. I would repurchase and El Rahab, if you go to my link, they have many other ones. They have um, a chocolate musk, which apparently doesn't last. This lasts like crazy long. I love when I go to bed at night, I can smell it and it's this beautiful, like I said, it's a soft musk with vanilla, a little bit of citrus, quite a bit of caramel. This is going to be my go-to for winter time. I'm not saying that you couldn't wear it in the summer, but it's definitely got that musk, and I prefer a musk for the winter. I love the white musk, caramel, vanilla, little bit of citrus. The citrus dries down for me pretty quickly. It's not overly sweet. It's just a beautiful, beautiful blend. So if that interests you at all, I would highly recommend that. And then the last thing, I'm so disappointed that I forgot to wear this for today's video and it would have been great colors with what I'm wearing. If you liked Urban Decay's Honey, Wet n Wild, what's it called? Call Me Sunshine. These are gorgeous colors and believe it or not, you can go more yellow or you can go more neutral. So if you go into these colors, they are definitely much more neutral and beautiful looks. I love these kinds of warm browns and then you've got a really warm brown here that is gorgeous and they blend out so beautifully. I find that this, even though it looks quite yellow, is beautiful as a transition shade or on the crease. The complaint I've heard about this one is that the shimmers are not overpowering. Well, as you age, that's a good thing in my books, and I find these pretty amazing shimmers. Like, these are gorgeous colors. I would say the only complaint I have is this is the only, well, unless you want to use this yellow, I'm running out of fingers here that are clean, <laughs> but this yellow and this white, that white is way too light for me to put on my um, lid, and this yellow is pretty sparkly and yellow, this one is very sparkly and yellow, so if I had a complaint about this pa palette, it would be that these are beautiful colors, but that's the lightest lid shade that I could use. It's still gorgeous, but I prefer to use a lighter lid shade. So I get my lid shade from a different palette, unless I'm using like this color, which is a very nice matte. But if you want a shimmer, these are going to be gorgeous, either all over the lid, or if you're just doing the outer edge. If you want an actual lid color that's light, I go into a different palette. 
That being said, I never thought I would love this palette the way that I do. Wet n Wild kills it with these 10 pan palettes and this is not a color scheme I would normally go for. Like, uh, Call Me Honey or, no, sorry, that's this one. Naked Honey from the Urban Decay. That one didn't appeal to me whatsoever. I'm wondering now if I might have liked it, but I don't need it because this is absolutely gorgeous. So if you are buying, which I'm glad this is the only palette that I got, I would say it's worth it. It's a beautiful, beautiful palette. It blends so nicely, and every time I've done a look with it, I have loved the outcome. It's so easy to blend. So for appreciation, I enjoyed my break from work and from YouTube. Now, I did work over the holidays because in my role, we have to close the books on 2023, set things up with targets for 2024, and it's just a lot to hit the ground running with. So I used the break to get prepared, and I felt so good. It really helped me. The break from YouTube, I missed filming, I missed talking to you guys, but what I used it for was getting my notes together. So often, because I work full time, or going back and forth between the two houses, when I sit down and film, I'm excited to film, but I don't have my notes together very well sometimes, and that probably shows. I was able to sit down over my break and really get some thoughts together of ideas for videos, as well as flesh out those ideas of looking up scriptures for my Sunday chats, or making notes of things that I want to make sure to include when I talk about whatever topic it is, and I really, really enjoyed that. Having the time off work meant I could come up here. Mark was able to come up here. Maggie, we're up here for a week and a half, and it was decadent. It was so nice. I just love it up here. It just feels more relaxing, even if I am working. I probably spent only maybe two days at my desk all day. Most of the time I was working maybe two hours or four hours, so it felt great like that. But it just was so nice being up here. just loved it. Christmas was wonderful. Santa spoiled me, and I will also talk about a lot of food in a minute. Um, we took Maggie for golf cart rides and to the golf course. She absolutely goes nuts. She loves the golf cart rides. She loves knowing she's going to the golf course. We have trained her off-leash, so we're able to take her off-leash. We look and make sure there's no golfers, and she goes running. Well then, for Christmas, Santa bought her a chuck-it ball. And we can throw that, and this little ball is small, especially for a dog of her size. She's 60 pounds. I would think this would be a ball more appropriate to a 25-ish pound dog. People commented that you don't want to leave your dog alone with this ball because they could tear it apart, but it's perfect for her mouth. She loves carrying this ball, and she loves chasing it. She just goes nuts on the golf course. It is so much fun <laughs> to watch her, and it wears her up. She, five, maybe 10 minutes max, of running around like a crazy dog out there, and she is exhausted. We bring her back in the golf cart, and she is a happy dog and sleepy, and it's wonderful. So that's been so much fun. For TV, we finished Bosch, which we really enjoyed. That's the detective in LA. He works for the LAPD. And at the end of the season, if you haven't watched it, I'm hopefully not spoiling things for you. It's not a big deal. But it goes to a new, um, it's still on Amazon, but it's on Freebie, which has ads in them, which I consider my potty breaks or commercial breaks. <laughs> so it's great. But it's called Bosch Legacy. And I think there's two seasons after Bosch finishes. And the difference is that he turns in his badge at LAPD, and he becomes a private detective. He also, they seem to downscale, like they don't have the set of the police department anymore, they don't have for the lawyer her big fancy office, she's gone into private practice, um, Bosch isn't in his apartment that overlooks LA, there's a lot of different changes like that where I think they scaled back 
but it's just as good in every other way. I, we're really enjoying it. We love sitting down and watching that. It's only 45, 50 minutes, so we enjoy that. We're about four season, or four shows into the first season. So, we have lots of food. I make fudge for ourselves, including it with gifts when we've been invited over numerous times over the holidays to friends' homes for drinks. I take fudge. It's so easy. You do two ingredients. Chocolate chips and sweetened evaporated, oh, sorry, don't get evaporated milk. Sweetened condensed milk. You put them together, stir them up in a big china bowl. I stick it in the microwave on high for 30 seconds. Stir it again, stick it back in another 30 seconds. Bring it out. When you stir it, if it needs it, from that point on, only do 15 second increments. The only way to mess this up is microwaving it too long. You want to microwave it as short as you can while still getting it melted. Once it's finished, add in whatever you want. Walnuts. I love the Hershey's toffee bits. And stir it all together. Put it into a parchment lined 8x8, 9x9 pan. Put it in the fridge probably about 12 hours. And then you can cut it and keep it at room temperature. It is delicious. When Mark had it the first time, he was like, we've been paying like six bucks for a bar of fudge. You made this whole thing. And it's like, yeah. And he's like, and it was easy. And I'm like, yeah. So it, that is really good. And it's always great to have around Christmas <clears throat> to put it into a little cellophane gift bag and tie a bow on it. And it's wonderful. Potatoes. I think I told you I got an Instant Pot probably two months ago. I love it, and the more I use it, the more I love it. I will do a video showing you all different recipes if you want, but I have to share this one, potatoes. Because they are not boiled, they're done in the Instant Pot, and I'll link the, the recipe below. You don't have to worry about it boiling over, boiling dry, too little, too long, anything that you normally would worry about on the stove. You stick them in the Instant Pot, seven minutes. It preheats, but then it cooks for seven minutes. When it's done, perfect potatoes. And you blend it up, and then the key was, ah, even if you don't have an Instant Pot, you could do your potatoes the old-fashioned way on the stove. I think they have more flavor for not being boiled. But you add a stick of butter, and some milk, warm those up in the microwave, and a good sized dollop of sour cream. Put that all into the mashed potatoes. Oh, it was heavenly. Those were the best potatoes I think we've had. I'm not a big potato person. I had potatoes with Thanksgiving or with Christmas and afterwards. Loved that. And then New Year's Eve, our tradition, we love to stay in and do steak and lobster. And that's what we did, and it was wonderful, it was decadent, it was just such a wonderful time. We didn't go out as often as usual, which was wonderful because we had our turkey leftovers, but we did go out a few times and we had amazing meals at friends' places, out at restaurants. I love, in the wintertime, doing soups, chilies, all those kinds of warm, hearty things. So we just had a decadent holiday with lots of great food. So that was our December. Tell me how yours was. What did you do? Did you travel? Did you stay home? Lots of people, quiet like us. I hope whatever you did that you enjoyed. And thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope 2024 is off to an amazing start for you. Love to you all and we'll talk to you next time.